For those who don't know, I'm Fred Niehaus. I have been doing Wi-Fi since 1994. We did Walk Talkie Barco, Beep, Perch Rent a Car. Walmart said, can you make our POS wireless? And we're like, piece of what in here? Okay, register, all right. Wireless Ethernet. We needed faster radios. We went to spread spectrum radio. You know, going to sped, spread spectrum radio, you know, allowed us to get to Wi-Fi 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and all, all of that. This is just the current lineup of products that we have today. Um, you know, if, if you look, we make more APs by accident than most competitors do. You know, and, and in the lineup here, the 1815 series is small. This 1830, I want to just call your attention to a couple things. PoE 15.4 watts, and then all of a sudden, bam, I needed 30 watts to function, right? So I've got this coming new 1840. The 1830-1850 series is this, and this kind of crossed the line between two, between 15.4 watts and needing more than that, right? So we decided we're doing a revamp of almost all of our product lines now, now and this particular AP, this 1830-1850, this is kind of big, kind of heavy. We've been hearing a lot of noise about that. Nothing rattles, and I've dropped this thing I don't know how many times, and I'll bet it still doesn't rattle, but we're getting rid of that coming out with this one you haven't seen this before this is the this is the basically the 1840 it's replacing these two still runs on 15.4 watts which is cool um, we make the very best APs the 4800 is this one here has hyper location in it does things that nothing else really out on the market can even do the um, I'm I was a little upset about half a year ago or so all of these are called Cisco Aeronet, Cisco Aeronet, right? The very first, one of the very first Cisco Aeronet APs was the 4800 that was a BAP. And then we did a 4800 as our top end AP, use the same number. I figure after about 12 or 15 years, we can reuse a number, right? So, so we get up to 4800 and they decide they don't want to call it Aeronet anymore. You know, and I'm having a fit and stomping around. What the hell's wrong with Aeronet? You know, I've been here forever and I like Aeronet, you know? And they're like, well, let's call it this, this Catalyst series, right? And I'm like, why Catalyst? Why, what, what's wrong with Aeronet? Well, Fred, I was told, <laughs> what is the very best product in the Cisco line? All, the very best Cisco has. Best brand recognition, best quality, best everything. Catalyst. I go, then maybe it's Aeronet, right? I mean, we're at least the second best. Yeah. So, so... The thought was, let's take this AP, the series of APs, as we go forward with Wi-Fi 6 or 11AX, let's call them Catalyst, and let's put a little bit more Cisco design into that thing than, than what we did in Ohio. You know, in Ohio, when we design an AP like that one I just threw, I'm going to go pick it up, and nothing rattles in this AP after I dropped it on concrete, right? A lot of aluminum here. You know, we make this stuff to work in a hot Goodyear tire plant, in a cold Kroger freezer, just about anywhere. And it's the same with the 4800, you know. It's designed to run anywhere. There's a lot of, lot of aluminum in there because we keep the heat down and we don't want it to fail. We make the very best hardware, right? So we've made APs in 99, we've made APs throughout this whole thing. And if you look at the new product now, why it's a different design altogether. It's a whole lot thinner, a whole lot smaller, doesn't weigh nearly as much. And I'm like, well, what about the quality of that thing? You know, a lot of competitors, they think, well, you know, if I'm gonna sell you a license agreement to use this, I don't care whether it's a paper cup, styrofoam cup, or a crystal cup, you know, if it breaks, I'll just give you another one. Well, that doesn't help if you're a Goodyear tire plant in Indiana and the robots are running around and things 35 feet in the ceiling and you've gotta replace it, you know, and the, and the line is down. We wanna introduce APs that are still industrial quality, still work well, but we wanted to redesign them. So the new AXAPs, there's, there's there's, there's three of them here. You see this Wi-Fi 6 compatible. I'll, I'll tune on that in a minute. When I went through this lineup, I told you we had basically 18 series, then we had 28, 38, 48, right? So 18, 20, 30, 48. Remember that because as we're going here, this is the equivalent of basically the 1800 series for AX. It's first out the gate APs that are standards based, okay? So they're Wi-Fi 6 standards. Now, OFDMA, o OFDM is, a, is, a, is, a, is really cool. It handles small packets. The difference between OFDM and OFDMA 
is OFDMA, if you think of many, many subchannels, I can put multiple people on one subchannel, so it's faster, so latency is, is much, much better. So in a 4x4 four four AP, we've done 4x4, four four, as I mentioned, in, in AC, so this is easy to get certification for 4x4. Four four. It's easy to get certification on the 9120. So this is like the 1800 series, 9115, 9117. 9117 is a true 8x8, but we're out of the gate early on that. We came out early with that product, and because it's an early chipset, it only does OFDMA in the downlink. This isn't the only AP we're making, right? We've got a several more in the pipe, but for an early 8x8, we had to use the chipsets that were available today to get this 8x8 out the door. So there's a lot of features in this, but it will not be Wi-Fi 6 certifiable. I don't care, I've got another 8x8 in the pipe that will be, okay? But if you've got an RFP that's asking for an 8x8 today and I don't have one, then the competition, everybody else says, well, I got one, they don't, put that in the RFP, we win, all right? So we don't want that. So basically, this is 8x8, this is 4x4, this has a 2.5 gig, M gig, multi-gigabit port, this one has a 5 gig, and then our new 9120, that's more like a 2800. Remember I said these are standards based, this has Cisco technology in this. This thing has got our own custom ASIC, our own custom silicon in it. It's, it's different than what you would find in a standard-based AP, and I'll tear into that in a bit. But this has basically Zigbee in it. It's got a 2.5 gig multi-gigabit port in it, and it's been redesigned. So like I said, it's now 38% lighter, smaller, easier to, to, to deploy doesn't weigh nearly as much. It's still very, very rugged. It's not gonna break, not gonna rattle, you know, and the design on this, you know, our guys in, in Richfield, Ohio do a lot of the mechanical designs, but we had to kind of bend a little bit because Cisco wants to put their very best in there. So they went and hired this Pina Farina. Anybody ever heard of them people? Yeah, I guess they do the Alfa Romero car and a bunch of, you know, I don't know who they are. I'm a guy that plays bluegrass music, you know, on my front porch. You know, I don't, don't know about these things. But uh, anyway, they did this Pina Farina design, laid it out really nice, and this AP also had a requirement of, of must use 802.3 AF 15.4 watts. I can make every one of our APs run on 15.4 watts in some mode or another by shutting off radios and stuff. But the AP can actually come up in that mode. No, very few APs out there can't. Almost everybody needs 30 watts. And give us 30 watts and I got full functionality on all of these APs as well using .3AT. So I can give you full functionality with 30 watts, but I can also give you functionality with that little old 15.4 watt. Well, why would I want that? There still are people who have small networks that have that older power scheme. There's still people who want to be able to power the unit up and at least do a walk around and see what the coverage looks like and all they have is 15.4. And you have a question. Fred, is that on all of the, well, the three AP all of the models? Three today. So you're not talking just the 9120. You can do that with all three that are I coming. can do that with all three APs right now. Every, every one, the, nine, the 15, the 17, and the 20, all of them have a 15.4 watt mode. And moving forward with, with other models coming out. Not that I can imagine that's going to be a big problem I can't think of customers. Well, remember that the able... first two I said were entry level, first right. to market. Okay. The the third one, the one that starts to become a power hog is is the 9120 because it's got the RF ASIC and a lot of other things in it. When we get into newer APs, future things, maybe you know, because remember this this is a 48, right? So there's two other models we haven't done anything with, you know, that they're higher up on the scale. When there's an equivalent with hyperlocation and everything else, I I probably won't have a 15.4. Right. So then what? Um, and again, I, don't, I just don't see that as a big problem with switching today. But if it was, what kind of features would I be missing? If radios. You're, I'm you're, you're okay. basically, if you, if you look, for the most part, what you're doing is when you start to cut down power, the problem is, is you, have, you have a power ask. I want 15.4 watts. Well, remember, I'm going to lose 2 watts at the end of 100 meters of Ethernet cable, right? So I'm losing power there. Also, oh gosh, this new AP has got a... A US, USB port on it, right? So if I pull this cap off of here and I've got a USB port, are you going to plug something in that? Oh, yeah, I want to plug this into that. Okay. Well, now you got another 500 milliamps. 
where are you gonna get that power from? Especially if you're at 15.4 watts. So, so that's the problem, right? I mean, as you start to add things, you know, we do a lot of things with modules. You know, the 3800 has a module in it. The 4800 is basically a 3800 with a module, and the module is an RF ASIC that was in the 4800 as a module, right? You know, so, so we do modules, we do things like that. Modules suck power, USB sucks power, multi-gigabit ethernet and a magnet, magnetics do. One of the things I didn't mention about these APAs is notice most of them are pretty simplistic in the front. Just basically all you have is, is the M gig port, the console port and reset. Well, where's my local power? Where's my DC power jack? Well, where's my extra UX port? Well, you start throwing an extra ethernet port in there, you start putting an extra power port in there, you're sucking more power again. Those are things I can't just dynamically turn off. And that's the reason why I couldn't get, you know, the the uh, 1850 to run on 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 that lower power because of, of those features that you just can't even if you turn them off they still got power unless you're going to put a relay in there or something and, and physically shut them off so so what makes best in class ap hmm well if you have a dedicated radio like the 4800 had a dedicated radio that radio can do things and leave the serving radios alone. Let the serving radios handle the clients, but use the extra radio for monitoring, things like that. Better yet, put a full spectrum analyzer on that, on that monitor radio. If you've got a full spectrum analyzer, then I can tell the difference between, you know, a Wi-Fi chipset doing spectrum analysis, going, oh, I think I heard something over here. It looks like maybe a phone. That's a deck phone, or that's an oven, and it's right where there, or that's Bluetooth. You, you know, the 3600 AP, we made years ago, Bluetooth didn't exist when that AP came out. It wasn't a product that, at all that anybody was concerned about. We were able to put a module in that, give it hyperlocation, give it Bluetooth, you know? So, you know, we can do things via module. So I consider a module on an AP part of something that might be best in class. I also consider a full spectrum analyzer, understanding the, the RF as being part of best of class. Fast location, that's a fancy word for saying, instead of using the servicing radios to, to, to find AJ over here, what I can do is I can fire up four APs, use the monitor radios to scan all the channels, and the monitor radios go boom, 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 boom. By signal strength, we figured out you're over here. You know, I can do that without impacting client serving radios. That's a big deal. The other thing is, you know, we've used Marvell technology for a lot of our chipsets in the past, because we really like them. We were able to teach them how to do client link properly. We're able to get, get our spectrum analyzer woven into the silicon of their chipset and have one thing. But you know, my Cisco badge says no technology religion. You, you don't wanna wrap yourself around only one vendor because then you only, you have the limitations of that one vendor. And those limitations are DFS. So you know, if, if you've got Qualcomm, Broadcom, Marvell, those are all different companies making a decision on DFS, on noise. And I have an another slide on that we'll get to if we have time. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a spectrum analyzer, a true one, that could sit there and listen to that and go, yeah, I got a DFS event over here, but my analyzer says that's really not radar. I've looked at the pack, I've looked at the analysis on it, it's not. Wouldn't you want the RF ASIC to go override that and say, ignore their DFS? So the point is, is different manufacturers have different DFS. DFS is critical for understanding interference, and you want to be able to get around that, right? So I mentioned modules. We have nothing really. I mean, we, 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 everything we've done, we have a large innovation of modules and silicon and special things that we've done with products. You know, we introduced clean air in .11n and the 3500. Clean air has still been one of our big flagship things because it's important to know what the spectrum looks like. Same with the Wizzy module, the, the 3600 brought you, you know, you know, we were able to get Wi-Fi AC wave one into the 3700 before there was an AC, you know, .11 AC when everybody was an N. We're able to do hyperlocation, flexible radio. That's, that's a big deal, being able to use two fives. I'll touch on that. And fast locate, and then of course now the RF ASIC. So what is the RF ASIC? You know, you've been saying oh, RF ASIC, RF ASIC. Okay, well, it's a custom chip that we designed, there's a lot in that, okay? There's, there's a radio, if you, if you take a look here, there's, I'm not reading that noise, but, but there's, there's a, a Wi-Fi radio here and an antenna connector, two of them actually if you wanna do hyperlocation, but some products will support that in the future, some products don't, but you basically have the Wi-Fi radio going into this baseband processor and I can tell 
at the low IQ level what that RF looks like. In fact, it's so low level that we don't even use an oscillator on the radio. We use an oscillator externally and inject it in because we don't want this to hear any noise that's not ours. You know, you don't want it to hear its own noise. It, it, you want this thing to really be an awesome receiver, right? So it's a software-defined radio, full DSP, and it's completely programmable. We can do all, a lot with this. With this, that's just a block diagram. As I said, it, it, the antenna jack comes in here. It's Cisco, Cisco Custom Silicon. You got your spec analyzer, your baseband processing, and then it goes off to the AP. So the AP says, you put this in an AP, and I've got a clear one over here that you can actually see. This is a 9120 with the, you know, it's clear. You can see that chip I was waving around is right there. So that chip is in there separate altogether from any other product. So that's not a standards-based AP. It's a standards-based AP as far as meeting all the standards, but it's above and beyond what you're going to find in, in that. And that's a big deal. You know, I was harping on this DFS. So and let's give you a real-world example. At Mobile World Congress, they had a thousand false DF detections per, DFS detections per day. It was horrible. You know, by using it, the spectrum analyzer, we're able to walk it back, determine it, and knock all that out of there. And the, and the takeaway is, is you have really good throughput, you have really good analysis of the spectrum that you don't have any other way. So that's what it looks like inside the AP I was waving around. This is the antenna system. It's really cool. If you take a look at the antenna system on this, these service the client radios dual band. You know, so, two, so it comes up natively 2.4 and 5 gig on these antennas. If you decide you want to do dual five, this does dual five. Other APs don't. Even the APs from competitors don't. Dual five means instead of a 2.4 and a five gig, give me two fives. That's two five gig radios that can do multi-user MIMO, two five gig radios that can now do OFDMA. I mean, you know, you, you know this is a big deal even, even, even with .11 AX or Wi-Fi 6. And then the RF ASIC has its own antenna and BLE has its own antenna. So we've thrown a lot of hardware into this. The reason flexible radio makes a difference is, just a quick one, and I won't dwell on this, if you have one cell, one channel, and you have clients close in and far away, these, these far away clients are going, my name is Fred. Close clients are, it's Fred. You know, I'm, I sent my data. Well, if I'm sending my data and I'm in contention with far away clients that are slower, I might have channel utilization at 60%, but if I turn around and say, you know what, I'm gonna break that up and create, have the AP create two five gigs, now I've got a cell where they're all in fast, and now I've got a far away cell where they're all more uniform. All the clients get a more uniform throughput, whether you're close or you're far away, and your utilization went, and you know, because I use two five gig channels, I went from one channel at 60% utilization to two channels at 20 and 24%. That's night and day. I mean, if you've got a channel and it's only at 24%, the clients aren't going to have contention and problems and retries. It's all about making it better. So the other thing is, is we have this dart connector on the external models. Now this one is a 9115. It doesn't support the dart. The 9120 we're coming out with will have a dart connector just like this USB on the side here. And you'll be able to plug the dart digital analog radio termination, pop it in and get four more antennas. By default, I'm two, four and five on the top plug this in, and I can be two, four, or five out here. Nobody else has that. You realize I can, I can put this in a window and put a patch antenna in the window cover parking lot and have an omnidirectional. Kroger freezer, I can put the AP outside the freezer where it's cold, pop hole in, put the antenna inside, cover the freezer inside and out with one AP. You know, I can do many, many different things like that with, by having that. And I can look, go ahead. Does that mean that I'm running the external antennas on the AP and the patch antenna? Not yes, one or the other. Yes, you're running correct? both. Okay, that's, and I wasn't. You know, you sure. have the ability, if, and, and here's the thing about that. You know, people like, you know, you get a competitor poo poo that or say, oh, well, you know, they, yeah, they can do that. Well, here's the thing. What if you're Lockheed Martin or some military facility? I just use them as an example. What if you're a military facility and you decide, I don't want two, four, and five on one antenna. I want to break it off. I want two, four out because I want to put it in an up converter and I want to do something on a military frequency or somewhere else. You could do that with our products. You've got the flexibility of doing, I mean, it's a big deal because we're RF. I'm a ham radio operator. Most of the guys in Richfield, Ohio love radio. 
we do radio, we do hardware. You know, anybody can make an AP, but make one that I can throw and not rattle. Make one that I can put in a jungle with no, no, you know, we've had people, customers put these things in a jungle and duct tape them to a tree and they ran for about a year and then they failed. I'm like, well, didn't you put it in a NEMA box? No, why not? You know, the reason it got, a, bugs got into the ethernet jack and ate up the, the gap pad material and that's what made the AP fail. Other than that, it'd still be running, right? I mean, you know, but, but with these antennas, you can go directional, omnidirectional, mix match, anything you want to do, you know? And the, the takeaway here is, is this RF ASIC that I'm crowing about, right? Better DFS, better full spectrum analysis, better fast locate, all this stuff, no impact on the client serving radios. That is huge, okay? Tomorrow, this radio is limited by software. I, say, I tell people it's like making a cupcake. If I pull a cupcake out of the oven, you don't put frosting on it, it's gotta cool down, right? The hardware is out of the oven, folks. The software people just have to write the software to do cool things. Sam has a unique voice, AJ has a unique voice. If I can tell on the RF who it is, I can do fingerprinting, I can determine who's there, I can do things that no one else will be able to do. And the takeaway with that is basically beyond the Wi-Fi standards, cool stuff, robust hardware that never fails. We're working with Samsung and all, all those other vendors as well to make sure we have the very best product.